Here's a look at our respiratory system board model. We start out here looking at the nasal cavity, which is this region right here. On the posterior side of the nasal cavity, air would move into the pharynx. Now the pharynx has got three separate regions to it. You have the region behind the nasal cavity, which is called the nasopharynx. You have a region behind the mouth, or the oral cavity, and this is called the oropharynx. And then the pharynx continues down here behind the epiglottis and, interior, and posterior to the larynx. And this is called the laryngeopharynx. Number 14 on here is the epiglottis. And if we move up here, we can also see 14 in here. 16 on here is the larynx. And that's harder to tell in this narrow region over here. 18 is the glottis, and the glottis is the opening for which air can travel. So let's talk about this region for a minute. When anything, air or food, comes down, the epiglottis is going to control in which direction that goes. If the epiglottis is open, like we see now, material will flow into the trachea. If the epiglottis closes, it closes off the trachea, the material will flow into the esophagus, which we have here behind the trachea. So 19 on here is the trachea. You can see 19 over here as well. The trachea has several rings of cartilage and is quite long. When it splits, it will be heading into the actual lungs. So over here, we've got the beginning of that split. Note, this is 20, and that's the same 20 that we have here. And now we are basically moving directly into our right and left lungs. So 20 and 23 here, these are the primary bronchi, the two bronchi that come off the trachea. Each of these have bronchi that split off of it. There are three on the right side, those are secondary bronchi, and there are two, 22, 21 right here, on the left side. And then we can see much more branching and branching and branching. And eventually we get down to a level of branching more like this. And we'll come back to this picture, but we're going to start out by looking at something like this from a histological perspective. So this is the inside of the lungs. And let's see if we can actually read. What we want to do is look at something like this. AS here stands for air sac. A stands for alveoli. There's another one. There's another one. So an air sac has lots of little alveoli around it. Over here, this is our air sac. And these are the alveoli surrounding the air sac. Now to get to that air sac, you have to move through something like an alveolar duct, both of these are alveolar ducts, and a respiratory bronchial, which is larger. And that, of course, will go to a terminal bronchial, and of course might be the wrong word here, but those will link up here and here and here and here and make it back to tertiary and secondary and primary bronchii and the tracheae. So we can begin to think about the connections even though we can't fully see the connections. Now, looking back over here, this is our alveolar sac and we see this line around it with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven alveoli that we see in this plane. If we look at an alveoli itself, they're showing us here little capillaries. This is a type 1 simple squamous cell. It's allowing for easy gas exchange over a very thin membrane. This is a type 2 cuboidal epithelial cell that will secrete surfactant, and so is this one over here. So this is an enlargement of one of these. And this is what you are seeing right here. Now, so on this area, we would have this terminal bronchial coming in, branching and branching all the way down to getting these different alveolar sacs with the alveolar ducts. 
And then on here we can see blood vessels. So we've got purple and red. The purple is coming in through the arterial blood supply from the heart. This is deoxygenated blood going to the lungs to get oxygenated. So these are the pulmonary arterioles. And in red here, we have the pulmonary venules. So this is 100% backwards to the systematic circuit. And one more quick thing to point out up here. This is a cross section of the trachea at low power. And we've got the idea of three different layers here. This bottom layer has the hyaline cartilage in it, which is what's making up the cartilage rings that we're seeing on this model here. On the surface layer here, what they're calling the mucosa, we have cilia on the top. These are the cilia up here. And this is pseudostratified columnar epithelial tissue. So remember, it looks like you have more than one nuclei. However, you do not. All right, that concludes the respiratory system, hopefully everything in it.